How's it going everybody? It is June 25th, 2018. Today, I'm going to give you some more information and hopefully teach you something about the new Madrid Seismic Zone or the new Madrid Seismic Zone, however you like to pronounce it. Um, it is a famous area, which you may have heard about recently. Um, it's more famous for it had an earthquake in 1811, 1812, which it ended up causing parts of the Mississippi River to flow backwards. It also created liquefaction, which is the process of sand being sh it, like if you put sand, for example, on a bass speaker and you turn your bass speaker on and get the waves going through it, you'll notice the sand acts as if it's a liquid. And and like I said, anything you put on it can flow. It, it's rather interesting to kind of get the to watch the process of liquefaction on sand to really happen. Um, and that was the main thing that actually occurred during this earthquake. So. On December 16th, 1811, the first of three large quakes struck on the New Madrid Zone with the last one occurring February 7th, 1812. It's estimated the earthquake registered from a 7.5 to an 8 on the Richter scale. Uh, the damage that was left behind though was quite remarkable and the quakes that they were so strong they shook church bells in Pennsylvania and as I said they also caused the Mississippi River to flow backwards. Um, and there's a lot more that had actually happened. Um, and pull over here so here are some things that that had happened because of it um, as I just told you it rang church bells at great distances all the way in Pennsylvania and also in South Carolina um, it the modified the Mississippi River the rising of some sections of land the falling of other sections six-foot falls were created in Mississippi River uh, trees broke loudly from violent shaking the rising of dead trees from river and lake bottoms uh, the creation of uh, crevet, wow, crevices in the earth as much as 10 feet wide. Sometimes the crevices open and then close, spurting water and sand into the air. So almost like a sand, you know, almost like a geyser. Um, the liquefaction of, and the subsequent sinking of structures. The toppling of brickwork, uh, particularly chimneys. People being thrown out of their beds. Um, as I said, it was, they, they're not exactly sure what it was, what the magnitude was, but they're going off. Uh, off you know personal accounts when people told them what happened and the damage that was reported and as I said it was estimated to be anywhere from a 7.5 all the way up to an 8 uh, on the Richter scale so if you don't know where the New Madrid fault lies I have an image right here for you pulled up so here's Missouri up to the north Tennessee down here um, we had our very first quake right out here out by uh, Big Lake this was the first one out by Blytheville at uh, 2.30 a.m. at December 16th, 1811. We had our second one here just south, down by Steele. And now these are um, uh, aftershocks too, So, but these are everything that was reported that they were able to take in and analyze. Uh, December 16th, 1811, about 11 a.m. to 8 a.m. Um, number, or, And that was for three as well, two and three right there, from 11 and 8 a.m. Um, four was January 23rd, 1812 at 9 a.m., which is right, um, just north of Haiti. Uh, you come to Marston, which is number five at 3.15 a.m. Um, up here is where it actually caused the river to run backwards. And then we also had temporary waterfalls reported February 7th of 1812. Pretty crazy stuff. Pull that down. Uh, now I'll go ahead and kind of read over what liquefaction is um, and not only that just kind of just give you a general understanding the most obvious effects of the 1811-1812 earthquakes are the large sandy deposits known as sand blows resulting from eruption of water and sand to the ground surface this phenomenon called earthquake induced liquefaction is the process by which water saturated sandy sediment temporarily loses its strength due to the buildup of water pressure in the pores between sand grains as seismic waves pass through the sediment. If the pore water pressure increases to the point that it equals the weight of overlying soil, the sediment liquefies and behaves as a fluid. The, results slur the resulting slurry of water and sediment tends to flow towards the ground surface along cracks and other weaknesses. Overlying soil floating on liquefied sediments move down, uh, move down even gentle slopes, causing fissuring and lateral and vertical displacements. This type of landslide, known this type of landslide known as a lateral spreading, is commonly responsible for damage to infrastructure such as bridges, roads, buildings during major quakes. 
Uh, during the 1811 1812 earthquakes, liquefaction and resulting lateral spreading was severe and widespread. Sand blows formed over an extremely large area, about 10,400 square kilometers. Effects of liquefaction extended about 200 kilometers northeast of the New Madrid seismic zone in White County, Illinois, 240 kilometers to the north northwest near St. Louis, Missouri, and 250 kilometers to the south near the, ma uh, near the mouth of the Arkansas River. Uh, in the New Madrid region, sand blows can be still seen on the surface today. In the past, the sand blows were attributed to the 1811-1812 earthquakes. We now know that some of the sand uh, blows predate 1811 and formed as the result of the prehistoric New Madrid earthquake. Uh, here's a model kind of what one looks like. You kind of see, so here's the, it shakes, shakes, and then it just shoots it up like a geyser. And it almost looks like a geyser, but the top too. It's really interesting. Um, and here's just kind of how it looks like on the inside, how things work. Here's, um, and I'll have all this links. You can kind of go back and look at it yourself. Uh, the New Madrid Fault System is a collection of reactivated faults that formed long ago when North America began rifting apart. The rifting halted before, before the continent broke apart, but the structures that formed that then are still part of the crust, and they have been rejuvenated by the, pre the present-day stress transmitted through the North American plate. Little evidence of the existence, the existence of these faults is visible at the Earth's surface, but the main structures are outlined by earthquake activity, such as, such as that is indicated by circles on the map to the right. Most of the se uh, seismic seismicity is located between the depths of 5 and 25 kilometers, well beneath the surface. So if we do start getting earthquakes, and here's an earthquake map, you always want to check the depths. So, you know, here at Hawaii, we know the lava... Um, the chamber at Hawaii is from 5 to 10 kilometers depth so it's a good way how you can kind of track magma movement for volcanoes but for fault lines and stuff the lower if you kind of if you know where the fault line lies so if it's if you're getting earthquakes 5 to 25 kilometers in depth you can kind of put two and two together that there's move like there's movement or something on the fault line uh, but that's only if you have earthquakes actually near there of course too um, now that's about all I had. I didn't want to really go too far in depth. Just maybe give you a couple things you didn't know. And um, like I said, just, just try to provide some decent information for you guys. I'll, I'll have another video out tomorrow. Um, I'll, I'll try to do another earthquake update and whatnot. I was going to do one tonight, but there hasn't been much activity other than we just had a big, we had a uh, 4.6 32 minutes ago out by Chile. But other than that, really not much for me to report on. But I will report on, out tomorrow. Oh, and then we had a 5.7 out here by Bristol Island. So um, we're getting some decent sized quakes. I take back what I said, but I, I'm still going to get off here. But I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Hope you guys have a great night.